If you've ever wished that you could take a powerful 3D scanner anywhere, no cables, no laptops, and no setup headaches, the new 3D Maker Pro 2 can might just be the scanner you've been waiting for. It's a fully self-contained, all-in-one 3D scanner that promises high precision, full color captures, and total portability in one sleek package. But does it actually live up to the hype? Over the past month, I've put the 2 can through real-world tests, from detailed miniatures and car interiors to tricky textures and outdoor scans. And today, I'm breaking down everything you need to know. The good the bad, and the surprising. Stick around because some of the results might just surprise you. Welcome back to Hoffman Engineering, let's get into it. But before we begin, this Toucan scanner was sent for me to review by 3D Maker Pro. As with all of my reviews, they aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this scanner for the last month. My videos do have affiliate links in the description, so if you're interested in anything you see in my videos, from scanners or accessories, you can use those links to help support our channel. We appreciate it. The Toucan is an all-in-one 3D scanner from 3D Maker Pro. No external computer is needed. You can scan, edit, and process the scan directly on the Toucan. This makes the Toucan extremely portable. You can bring it with you wherever you need to go. The Toucan is a blue structured light scanner. It projects a series of patterns in blue light onto the surface of an object, and the Toucan's four cameras detect how that pattern deforms over the surface, using that to calculate depth information and build a 3D model of your object. Those four cameras are split into two pairs. The inner pair is the small format mode, enabling up to 0.05 millimeter accuracy for smaller parts. The outer pair is the Toucan's large format scanners, enabling much larger scans. The smaller mode has a focus range of 200 to 500 millimeters, while the large format mode can capture up to 1000 millimeters in front of the scanner. The Toucan also has a 48 megapixel RGB camera. This allows it to capture color texture information, which can be overlaid on the final object. Moving around to the back, we see the 6 inch touchscreen display. The touchscreen works great and is very responsive to the touch. 3D scanning is computationally intensive and to handle that, the Toucan comes packed with some beefy hardware. It has an 8-core CPU running at 2.4 GHz with 32GB of DDR4 RAM. It also includes 256GB of onboard eMMC storage, plenty of room to store all of your scans while on the go. To enable that portability, the Toucan has a 6,600 mAh battery. 3D Maker Pro claims that it enables up to 120 minutes of scanning on a single charge, and I found that to be true. I was able to get just over 2 hours of scanning and and processing between charges during my tests. The Toucan has a few more buttons and switches. On the back is a rotary dial which can adjust brightness up and down. You can also use the touchscreen, but a physical dial is convenient while scanning. Normally the Toucan is used in continuous scan mode, capturing frames as fast as it can. But if you switch into single frame mode, then you can use the button at the top to strategically capture images one by one. I found this most useful for filling in details that I might have missed, but I didn't use it too often. Finally at the bottom we have a standard quarter 20 tripod mount a USB-C port used only for charging the battery, and the power button. The Toucan has internal fans which constantly run and exhaust the air out of the vents at the bottom. The fans aren't loud, about 40 decibels from a foot away, and they do a pretty good job of keeping the Toucan cool. After continually scanning, the Toucan is warm to the touch, but not hot. My thermal camera tests show a hot spot of just 41 degrees Celsius, still very cool. The Toucan comes in a standard combo and a premium combo. I have the premium combo, which includes a nice hard carrying case. Inside of the top sleeve, we have the wrist strap, turntable, tripod extension, and calibration card holders. The bottom sleeve has 300 adhesive reflective marking dots, the manual, and the calibration card. Finally, in the main section, we have the tripod, a 65 watt USB-C charger and cable, and finally, the Toucan itself. I love the packaging. It shows you exactly what is in each box while being safely packed for shipping. The standard version does not include the carrying case or the tripod. Scanning on the Toucan is very simple. Press new scan, and it takes you into the scanning screen. Here here we can see the scan data, a preview of what the scanner sees, and a few other details such as a distance histogram and FPS data. Before scanning, we can adjust settings such as what capture mode we want, whether we want to capture texture data with the RGB camera, and whether we want to have large object mode enabled. If large object mode is disabled, then we get the high detail sensors active. The ideal distance is between 200 and 500 millimeters in small object mode. If we enable large object mode, then we can see that the scanner's ideal distance range increases to 300 to 1000 millimeters away. You can also change the distance range if you want the scanner to ignore something closer or farther away. Once you have the settings adjusted, you can start scanning. As you move the scanner around the object or the object in front of the scanner, you can see the 3D model appear in the sensor screen. 
If you move too fast, the toucan might lose tracking. Simply move back to an area you've already scanned, and pretty quickly it will recover tracking and continue. I found that tracking recovery was generally pretty quick, but it does take longer the larger a particular scan gets. 3D Maker Pro advertises up to 15 frames per second, but I never got that. In my tests, I was averaging between 8 and 10 frames per second. That was good enough for a decent scanning experience, but it wasn't a buttery smooth experience. Before we continue, let's talk about scanning modes. The Toucan has four modes. Geometry is the main mode. This uses the surface details of the object that you are scanning to detect how the scanner is moving from frame to frame, and using that to build the 3D model. This works best for objects with distinct details. Some objects won't work in geometry mode though. Look at this Lego version of the Starry Night painting. Lots of smooth, flat surfaces. Not a lot of distinct details for geometry mode to track with. Well, in this case, you can switch to texture mode. This uses the RGB camera to detect the textures, and uses that to track frame by frame. This works much better for objects with detailed colors and textures. Finally, we have two marker modes. The first mode uses markers on the object itself for tracking. This is great for large objects without distinct geometries or textures. The markers keep the toucan on track. Finally, there is a global tracking mode. This uses markers in the environment, like on the turntable or table. First, you scan the markers so the toucan knows where they are, and then you can place the object and start scanning. This lets you scan smaller objects that might otherwise lose tracking, like this Kerbal head. Scanning only takes a couple of minutes. Once finished, the next step is to clean up the point cloud. You can use the selection tools to select and delete any points that you don't want, like the turntable or other oddities. It took a little while for me to get used to the touchscreen, but soon I was quickly selecting and deleting. Next is to generate the mesh. You only have three options, low, medium, or high quality. Medium quality is good enough most of the time, but it does smooth out some of the smaller details. If you need all of the detail, then high quality will take more time and have a larger file size, but it will have more details. After meshing, the final step is texture mapping. If texture mode was enabled, then it will apply the color textures to the models. Let's talk about processing time. While the initial scan is very quick, just a couple of minutes, everything that comes after takes much longer. The mesh generation was relatively quick, usually another 3-5 to five minutes on medium quality, and up to 10 minutes on high quality. But texture mapping is much, much slower. Textures could sometimes take 20, 30, or even more minutes to render. I was not too bothered by that time though. I figured, take a bunch of scans and then process them afterwards. It's normal for those steps to take a while, that's no problem. However, I was bothered by the point cloud generation step. Once you finish a scan and press next, the toucan has to generate and save the point cloud before you can do anything else, like start another scan. And depending on the size of the scan, this could take a while, up to 25 minutes for the scan of the interior of my car. So if you are scanning one object here and there, that extra time doesn't really matter. But if you need many scans in a row, like a business might, then that could be a bottleneck. And now that we have our scans, what do we do with them? As mentioned, the USB-C is only for power. You cannot use the USB-C port to connect to your computer. This means no tethered scanning, but it also means no transferring of files via USB. To transfer files, you have to do it using Wi-Fi. Connect to your network by swiping down from the top, opening up the settings, and connecting to your network. On the computer you want to transfer to, you have to have 3D Maker Pro's software, JM Studio, installed. Within JM Studio, enter a workspace and then select Import from Mobile from the menu. This shows you your computer's IP address. Then on the Toucan, select the project you want to export and select Export to Computer. Enter the IP address of your computer and click OK. This will compress and transfer the project. And that transfer is very slow. Even though both devices are connected to 5 GHz Wi-Fi, it is transferring between 12 and 17 megabits per second. That's around 2 megabytes a second which means this 4 megabyte scan will take over 35 minutes to export to your computer. This is very slow, and one of my least favorite parts of the Toucan. Once on your computer, you can import the project into JM Studio. This brings over the raw scan data and any mesh or textures that you processed on the Toucan. Inside JM Studio, you have many of the same tools to edit or process the scan. However, JM Studio has some strange file size problems with these imported scans. While the Toucan transfers over files that are 1 to 4 gigabytes in size, when imported into JM Studio and the project is saved, the resulting folder is often 10 times that size. The exported files of all of my tests were 28.8 gigabytes, but after importing them all into JM Studio, all of the folders are 364 gigabytes of data. So you'll want a lot of extra hard drive space to work with with all of these raw scan files. With all of the specs out of the way, let's take a look at how well the two can scans. My first scan was this 3D printed dragon. Large object mode made quick work of the scan, taking just about two minutes to fully scan. It tracked well and it had no issues with the thinner wing and tail sections. 
This resin 3D printed dragon tower is packed full of very small, intricate details. I was not impressed by my first attempt. The details were missing, and it was just a lower quality scan than I expected. But then I learned that you can turn the scanner sideways. This seemed to work much, much better for taller, skinnier objects. I don't know if the sensors have a higher resolution across the length of the toucan, and turning it sideways lets you use that higher resolution. But my second scan turned out amazing. I love the details that the toucan was able to capture. So most of my turntable tests were done with the toucan mounted sideways. Next up is this 3D printed Donald Duck statue. The blue light of the toucan had a very difficult time scanning the yellow arms and beak. Turning on dark mode and boosting the brightness worked somewhat, but it wasn't able to capture all of the details in those yellow sections. The non-yellow sections scanned really well though. This lion statue can be tough to scan. The reflective gold foil and small mirror details can really confuse some scanners. The toucan did a pretty good job in geometry mode. Even though it was warning about losing tracking, it was able to complete a scan. And the resulting mesh looks good. The processing on the toucan does not seem to have an option to fill any gaps, so when we import into JM Studio, we see the mesh still has holes in it. You can close those in JM Studio, however. Another issue is that the toucan did not successfully process the texture information. Even though I told it to capture textures, when I tried doing the texture mapping, it just came up blank. I'm not sure what happened here, and it has happened in a few other scans. This Kerbal was 3D printed and then painted with acrylic paints. My first two scans in geometry mode did not work. The toucan got confused with the turntable and the relatively featureless curved helmet. It would lose tracking and then begin again in the wrong position. This is a perfect use case for markers. I put the provided markers on the turntable and switched the scanner into global marker mode, and the toucan did a great job this time around. I was able to complete a scan and process and texture map directly on the toucan. The toucan has a face scan mode, which reportedly switches the blue light pattern into a lower power mode that is safer for the eyes. Comparing the two, I might be able to see a brightness difference, but I don't know if I would consider it eye safe. It is still very unpleasant. But for the sake of testing, I will subject myself to it. And after processing the mesh, the toucan just crashed? The screen turned all black, but it was still on and running. I gave it a few minutes, but it didn't come back on. I had to hold the power button and force it to turn off. Starting back up, the project was saved, but after about 30 seconds of looking at it, the screen would go black again, but this time it kicked me out to the main project page. No other project acted this way, just this face scan. Once I started processing the texture though, it finished without issues. Looking at the scan, the final texture scan looks pretty good. Nice colors, and not too bad for scanning myself. However, the textures are doing a lot of the heavy lifting. If I turn off the textures, then we see the actual face mesh is pretty low resolution. I think that most of the polygons went into my bad shoulders from me moving around, so it, not a lot went into my face. It would be good enough for 3D printing though, but for face scanning, you really want a near-infrared scanner. I found this blue light scanner just to be too harsh, even in face mode. This drill was very easy to scan. The toucan had no problems with either the green or the black areas. This was another scan that just did not capture the textures correctly though, so I only have the mesh data. Exporting the mesh to JM Studio was easy. You can reorient it by selecting the bottom surface plane and then using the tools to rotate the model. You can export in many different formats. I exported it as a .obj. Opening it up in Mesh Mixer, we can take some measurements. The toucan measured this front section at 69.09 millimeters, where my calipers measured 69.91 millimeters, or a 1.1% difference. This back section of the scan measured 80.9 millimeters compared to 81.28 millimeters in real life, or a 0.5% difference. Finally, the scan of the reflective metal bit holder measured 9.74 millimeters, where I measured 9.81 millimeters, or a 0.71% difference. I am pretty impressed that I was able to capture 1% or less difference in scale from the scanner. The toucan arrived with a very accurate calibration. One of the drawbacks of the blue light scanner is that it does not work really well in direct sunlight. While the scanning size of the toucan can theoretically handle scanning a full car, it was not working for me. Either between the lack of details for geometry mode to capture, or the sunlight, the toucan was having tracking issues. But this is a perfect case for marker dots though. I randomly added dots all along the front bumper. Switching to marker mode, the toucan captured it perfectly. It never lost tracking when the dots were in view, and it was easily able to capture the bumper. The resulting scan is very smooth. I was impressed. And the toucan did an excellent job capturing this door panel. It was a very easy scan. 
fan, rarely losing tracking. I like how it even captured some of the wiring and tubing. It didn't like the reflective chrome door handle though, but the rest of the panel was captured nicely. Trying something larger, let's capture the entire front interior. The sunlight on the top of the dash was causing the toucan not to be able to capture it, but everything else that wasn't in direct sunlight captured amazingly well. The large format scanner isn't the most detailed. It captured much of the center console, but if you wanted the details of the buttons, then you'd want to switch to small scanner mode and capture just that area of interest. Finally, it's October, so it's spooky season. I scanned these skeletons, which turned out great. I didn't capture the backside of the bench or the skeletons, but the front surfaces look pretty decent. And the toucan did a great job with all of the occlusions of the thinner bones. The Toucan at launch has a few rough edges that I want to point out that I hope will be resolved in future firmware updates. The first is that I can only seem to select the China time zone, even though automatic time and dates is enabled. The time displayed also drops the leading zero for the minutes, so 11.06 just shows 11.06, which is unusual. And the help menus in the settings are less than helpful. Most of them are blank, and nowhere in the manual does it tell you that you need to swipe from the top of the screen to access the Wi-Fi and system menus, so you'll need to learn about that on your own. The other issues I've already mentioned, like the occasional missing texture rendering. The Toucan does come with a calibration board, but I don't see any way to run it through the calibration process. The Toucan seems pretty well calibrated from the factory, as seen with the drill measurements, but if you needed to recalibrate it for whatever reason, I don't know how. And I also had a lot of crashes with JM Studio. It did not like working with the 30 plus gigabyte project files. I found that I had to close out of JM Studio and reopen it if I wanted to open a different project. If I had a project open and I tried to open a different one, JM Studio would crash almost every time but reopening JM Studio seems to mostly solve that issue. In conclusion, I think 3D Maker Pro has a good foundation with a Toucan 3D scanner, but I ran into a few software issues that added some blemishes to my tests. I love the all-in-one unit. It is very convenient to just grab the scanner and go. Not being tethered to a computer or having to worry about weird phone holders makes scanning with a Toucan a very freeing experience. And the long two plus hour battery life means that you can do a fair amount of scanning before needing to plug it in. And I like being able to process the scan directly on the Toucan. The touchscreen makes it easy to clean up the scan data before processing, and the mesh and texture mapping tools were great. I was getting pretty high quality mesh data from the Toucan. I cannot verify the 0.03mm resolution, but it was able to capture some pretty fine details from the resin 3D print. And the versatility of having both closed distance and long distance sensors means that the Toucan can capture both small objects and very large objects in the same device. But the slower processing time, especially between finishing a scan and saving the project, meant that I was waiting a fair amount between my tests. For some, that might not be a big issue, but if time is money, then that could be a problem. And there are definitely some software and firmware tweaks that I would like to see to clean up the user interface and make scanning more user-friendly. I'd love to revisit this in a few months to see if things have changed. The 8-core processor and 32GB of RAM of the Toucan is good enough for the 8 to 10 frames per second scanning speed, and the 256GB of on-device storage was more than enough for all of my test files. However, I was surprised at how long it took to transfer those scans to my computer over Wi-Fi. And I was even more surprised that the resulting JM Studio project files needed 10 times more storage space, so you'll need plenty of hard drive space when working with the Toucan. The standard combo of the Toucan 3D scanner is currently on sale for $999 US dollars at the time of recording. The premium combo, which includes the carrying case, tripod, and a license to Geomagic Lite, is on sale for $1,199 US dollars. At $1,000, the Toucan is one of the least expensive all-in-one scanners on the market. Most other wireless scanners at this price point require a laptop or pretty modern smartphone to scan with, so normally you'd have to factor that into the total cost of the scanner. But the Toucan is truly an all-in-one device. If you are looking for raw scanning performance, then I think the Toucan falls somewhere in the middle of the pack at this price point. But if you are looking for a very convenient wireless scanner that can capture good quality scans on the go, then the Toucan wins every day. So thank you all for watching my review of the 3D Maker Pro Toucan 3D Scanner. What was your favorite feature? What features do you think it's missing? Let me know in the comments below. And I have plenty of upcoming projects and reviews in the works, so be sure to subscribe to Hoffman Engineering so you don't miss out on those videos coming soon. And if you are still in the market for a 3D scanner, check out my recent review of the Creality Otter Lite. This wireless 3D scanner might just be what you are looking for. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.